Good evening. My name is Rolando Lavaro. I'm the Jersey City City Council President, and it's my privilege to welcome you to Mayor Stephen Phillips' third State of the City Address and the City's 196th State of the City Address. Thank you all for joining us tonight. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the numerous dignitaries who are in attendance tonight. We have with us tonight, um, it's their house, my fellow council members, the councilwoman at large, Joyce Waterman. <laughs> councilman at large, Danny Rivera. <laughs> Ward A Councilman Frank Gajewski. <laughs> Ward B Councilman Kemraj Chico Ramshal. Ward C, Councilman Richard Boggiano. <laughs> Ward D, Councilman Michael Yun. <laughs> Ward E, Councilwoman Candace Osborne. <laughs> and Ward F, Councilwoman Diane Coleman. <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Chief Judge uh, Carlos Abad and all of our judges for being in attendance. We have with us tonight Assembly Speaker Vincent Prieto. Governor James McGreevy. The Vice Chair of the State Democratic Party, Lizette Delgado. Thank you, Lizette. Essex County Dem Democratic Committee Chairman Leroy Jones. Our own Jersey City Democratic Chairman Sean Thomas Sul Sully Sullivan. Our Senator for the 31st District, Sandra Cunningham. The Assemblyman from the 33rd District, Raj Mukherjee. The assembly team from uh, the 31st District, uh, Nick Chavalati, and Assemblywoman, and Assemblywoman Angela McKnight. Hudson County Executive Tom DeJesus graced us. Marlboro Mayor Jonathan Hornick. Weehawken Mayor Richard Turner. Harrison Mayor James Fife. Is Fort Lee Mayor Mark Sokolich with us tonight? I hope the traffic was okay coming over here. Uh, representing Cliffside Park, Mr. Jerry, Jerry Calabrese. Our Hudson County Freeholder is Freeholder Bill O'Day. Freeholder Junior Maldonado. Freeholder Anthony Romano. Freeholder Kenny Kopaz. <laughs> Hudson County Clerk Barbara Netcher. <laughs> we have South River Councilman Ryan Jones. <laughs> and from the uh, Board of Education, the uh, Jersey City Board President uh, Vidya Gangadin and Board Member <laughs> John Reichardt. So thank you all for being here, all of you dignitaries, and everyone here in attendance tonight. Your presence here speaks to the important and pivotal role that our city and our mayor play in Hudson County, the region, and in the state of New Jersey. I'd like to take, take this opportunity to highlight some of the accomplishments over the past year that the mayor and council have proudly worked together um, over, over this past year. First of all, I want to talk about the unprecedented development and growth. I'm sure you can see 
here on the waterfront and um, all of the, the buildings that are being erected. Uh, we have the construction of the um, 99 Hudson Street that we just recently um, broke ground on, which will be the tallest building in the state of New Jersey. But beyond Journal Square, we're seeing construction throughout Jersey City, and it's in large part because of Mayor Stephen Fulop, um, a, a policy that uh, incentivized development in other parts of the city, and in Journal Square, you're seeing the first building that will remake Journal Square, Square and the heart of our city. Anywhere from the city, where, wherever you're looking, you'll probably see it standing tall, and you'll see two more buildings erected nearby. We see a plummeting unemployment rate with all of this growth and development in Jersey City. But here in Jersey City, we're not just about shiny buildings, as that only tells half the story of Jersey City. More, most recently, we just broke ground on a project that's going to build, uh, create the first affordable housing in downtown Jersey City in decades. Over 160 units. And we have with us tonight uh, members of a recently established Division of Contract and Compliance and our Office of Diversity and Inclusion to address the employment disparities that we have, here, have had here historically in Jersey City and creating pathways for local residents, minorities, and women, and co contractors to benefit from all of this unprecedented development. Over the past year, we expanded on earned sick days, and I'm not sure if he, he arrived yet tonight. Uh, Mayor Ross Baraka, are you in attendance tonight? Well, we, we, after Mayor Fulop was the first to introduce it, um, Newark did us one step better, and this past year we, we, we caught up and expanded on our earth earned sick days here in Jersey City, leading the charge again. We passed legislation establishing wage theft protection so that uh, employ, um, employees in Jersey City uh, can, can file wage theft charges and be able to get, their, get protection um, from unscrupulous employers. <laughs> Mayor Fulop led the charge by expanding health care options for trans transgender city workers. And <laughs> yes and establishing the $15 minimum wage for our city employees here, leading again by example. We're hiring more police officers and increasing our police presence, particularly in our toughest neighborhoods in our city, dedicated walking posts um, in those neighborhoods and communities that have long been neglected. But as Mayor Fulop often says, we can't police our way to safer streets and safer neighborhoods. Um, and so we've been growing and diversifying our recreational programs, getting unprecedented numbers of youth participating in our programs, and hiring over 1,000 youth in our summer jobs. But that's just a sample of what has gone on in Jersey City over the past year. Jersey City is on the rise, and our ambition to be the best mid-sized city in the nation remains unfulfilled. But we're on the right track, and Mayor Fulop is leading the way. So now I'd like to, um, be but before I continue and introduce some of our other presenters tonight, um, I just ask everyone to please turn off or mute your phones. I'll take a, take a minute, 30 seconds for you to do that if you haven't done that. Thank you. And I'd like to ask, ask everyone to please stand up. And I'd like to introduce you to Myrna Boutros, President of the Liberty High School Student Council, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Council, Council President. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd ask you to please remain standing, and I'd like to introduce Marlisa Mabutas, a sixth grader from PS24 school, who will sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light 
What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs burst That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spent gold banner That was amazing. So I have one job to make sure I acknowledge all of the elected officials, and I butchered that. So I, I want to offer my apologies and acknowledge Assemblywoman Annette Chaparro. <laughs> now I'd like to uh, introduce Parisa Mangal, a fifth grader from PS16, uh, who will. Uh, Sing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains. Through the prairies, through the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Now I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Rabbi Deborah Hashem of Temple Bethel in Jersey City, who will, who will conduct the invocation. Let us pray. O Holy One, source of life and strength, we gather this evening to ask you to strengthen our city and all its inhabitants. We are grateful for the many gifts you have already extended to us, caring citizens, dedicated leaders, minds to imagine what can yet be, hearts to feel the pain of others, hands joined to create a better tomorrow. We need your strength so that we might face the many challenges confronting this community, and we understand that our strength comes not from our physical strength, but from the conversations we have with those who differ from us, 
It comes from the longtime residents who share their stories and experiences. And it comes from our young people who bring their hopes and dreams. It comes from those who have newly arrived as immigrants from across the ocean or across the Hudson. As we reflect on the year past and the year yet to come, we especially ask that you strengthen our mayor, Stephen Fulop, keep his moral compass directed toward improving the lives of every resident of Jersey City in every neighborhood and of every background. Help him to carry his responsibilities with dignity and courage, fearless to do what is right, willing to take risks, and always putting the welfare of our city first. We ask that you, O oh God, watch over each one of us. Guide us that we may understand that each of us has a role in the success of Jersey City. Inspire us and comfort us and strengthen us, O oh Holy One of Blessing. Amen. Jersey City has always been the golden door to America, the gateway to this country, a place of immigrants, a place of opportunity. We made a commitment to expand the police department and make the police department look more like the residents of Jersey City. We couldn't be more proud that we are rated and ranked as one of the most diverse cities in the entire country. Definitely much more safe, a lot more family oriented, and I enjoy living here. I think it's a change in neighborhood. It's moving forward in a lot of ways and I'm very comfortable in the neighborhood being a woman. We're going to be the first in the, for sure, in the state of New Jersey, but a police department this size having our actually police headquarters in public housing. This police station, the first to be built in decades in Jersey City, will not only be a state-of-the-art facility for our police officers, but it will be a memorial to Melvin and all the officers who have died in the line of duty protecting Jersey City. There's a lot of things over the last couple of years to be excited about Jersey City. On every economic metrics, we're leading the entire region. Construction starts, affordable housing creation, veteran housing. I don't need to travel the world. I have that right here with all the diversity. That's one of my favorite parts of being in Jersey City. This one is special because um, it really is remaking not only the Jersey City skyline, the entire New Jersey skyline. This will be the first affordable housing inclusionary project within several decades that has started in Jersey City. I like being able to go down the corner to grab a cup of coffee, see local music at local clubs and local restaurants. This has been nothing short of inspiring. We could unequivocally say that lives will be saved in Jersey City because of the work that you are all doing. It is important to make sure that every single person in Jersey City has a living wage. I'm glad to be in Jersey City. It's a wonderful place to live. And it's nice to see Jersey City growing. And I feel much safer, much, much safer. Thank you. Thanks. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Please, let me first say good evening, and I'm proud to welcome you to our third State of the City together. I want to thank you for joining me to discuss some topics that I know are very personal to me and I know very important to you as well. But first, I want to thank the public officials from the state and the county who have joined us tonight, members of the clergy who are here, members of the court, members of the Jersey City Council who's been partners in absolutely everything that we do, fellow members of my administration, and most importantly, you, the residents of Jersey City, thank you for joining us for our third State of the City. Tonight, I'm going to talk about how we protect the things that make Jersey City the special community that we all know and love. As we hear about Jersey City at a time of divisive national presidential politics, those of us who live here understand Jersey City is truly a community of harmony. This is the place that peacefully greeted thousands of immigrants from foreign lands. This is the place of endless potential and boundless dreams. And this is the place that today is pushing government to new frontiers of innovation. Tonight, I want to talk about how we plan to move our city forward as we continue to push the boundaries of greatness. Every single day, as I travel throughout our city, I am excited by how far we've come in the past few years, and I'm energized thinking about where we'll go from here. I've always championed the notion of one Jersey City, where every resident, from the Hudson River to the Hackensack River, has the opportunity to build a happy and safe home for themselves and their families. We have continued to work hard to prove that the best things about our city don't start and stop at the waterfront, and that regardless of ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, religion, or income, every resident will be able to live a healthy and productive life here in Jersey City. Over the last year, we have been at the forefront of many social issues, ranging from transgender rights, when we became one of the first cities in the country to expand trans-inclusive healthcare coverage to our city employees, <laughs> to being at the forefront of education as the Jersey City Public School District is about to regain local control over our schools from the state of New Jersey for the first time in 27 years. We also delivered on our promise to increase accountability and efficiency within our administration through the consolidation of the Jersey City Incinerator Authority within the city's Department of Public Works, saving millions of dollars for taxpayers. And while, <laughs> and while these important policy changes have helped move the city forward, we've also experienced many changes that directly impact the everyday lives of our residents. Our Jersey City economy has continued its unparalleled growth over the past year, and the progress we have, made, been, have been able to make has been nothing short of remarkable. In the last year, the city has added over 3,500 jobs, we've opened over 300 new small businesses, and we've reduced unemployment to a 25-year low of 4.1% all within the last year. In In 2015, we had nearly 7,000 residential units under construction, more than anywhere else in New Jersey, and actually a record for Jersey City itself. <laughs> However, we also wanted to ensure that residents of all income levels could benefit from the new development. So we're creating affordable housing units across the entire city, with as many affordable units created in the last two years alone as the previous eight years combined. We've also started construction on Jersey City's first veteran housing project there, something that is particularly close to my heart as a Marine Corps veteran. As a city, we've signed on to First Lady Michelle Obama's challenge to end veteran homelessness, and I am proud we are moving forward on projects that provide for our Jersey City veterans. We've all We've also made great progress on development, for example, in Journal Square, including what will be one of the largest residential towers in the city, and one that will bring new life and new opportunities back to Journal Square. 
Last year, we also brought a full-service bank back to the hub for the first time since 2010, something that the community both needed and deserved. And In 2015, we welcomed City Bikes Bike Share program to Jersey City, and within six months, we've seen nearly 75,000 trips taken throughout the city. And then later this spring, I am proud to say we're going to be opening our new flagship park, the largest park in Jersey City, Berry Lane Park, in the heart of Ward F. In the heart of Ward F, a community that needs it. Also, this past year, we launched the City's United Rescue Program the first community-based emergency response network in the United States, giving Jersey City the fastest EMS response times in the country. And later this month, Detroit, Michigan, will begin, become the first city to follow our lead by announcing plans for similar life-saving systems. I share that with you because Jersey City has been a leader in 2015, and we will continue to lead in 2016 and far beyond. It's important to underscore that we've been able to accomplish all of this while keeping taxes flat for three years in a row. We, <laughs> we've continued to champion the idea that if we implement programs efficiently and effectively, government can work. And as, we, as we've seen here in Jersey City, it can actually work very well. But even as we make progress on these fronts, it's absolutely essential that we remember the foundation for each and every one of our successes is the safety of our residents. Public safety is the prerequisite for new parks, for residential developments, and for innovative transportation systems. It's really the nucleus of our growth. Without safe streets, we can't possibly build the strong, vibrant city that we're working towards every day. After all, what good are new jobs if people don't feel safe going to work in the morning or coming home late at night? So every day at 5 a.m., the first thing I do is I get up and I get an update on any violence that occurred in the city or surrounding area, and nothing pains me more than knowing that the life of a community member was taken due to an act of violence here in Jersey City. Each resident's life is priceless, and I hold myself personally responsible for every act of violence that happens here in Jersey City. I took an oath of office, I took an oath when I began my journey in the Marine Corps, and again when I was sworn in as mayor of this city. Both of these pledges point to an obligation to protect the lives of each and every citizen, and I take these oaths very seriously. Knowing how valuable each resident's life is, we have taken aggressive steps to combat crime here. While tonight, I am proud to report that Jersey City is the safest urban area in New Jersey, I also know we have much more work to do. Thank you. I could point to statistics, you've all heard it, we've had a double digit percentage decrease in crime and violent crime since I talk office and we've had impressive reductions in all crime categories according to the FBI. I could single out individual categories, assaults are down 17% or aggravated assaults 14%, robberies 23%, burglaries 16%. I could point to fewer shootings over the last year and since we've took office, or that we've recovered more guns than any year in the history of the city. I could point to all that. I could point to statistics, but the reality is that I think we know, and as Mark Twain once famously said, there are three kinds of lies. There's lies, damn lies, and statistics. <laughs> while, while these facts, I think, are indisputable, I know we face the sobering reality, though, of gun violence in our community. For example, we recently made 12 gun arrests in one weekend, half of which were juveniles. Clearly, there is a breakdown in society when so many young people have access to guns. However, this epidemic isn't unique to Jersey City. It is impacting communities throughout the nation. Every single urban mayor in the country understands this and must deal with this challenge on a daily basis. So tonight, we won't focus on the challenges or the statistics, but on the tangible changes we are making to build a safer city. Often, I walk the streets of Jersey City and I get feedback from residents, which is the most helpful and meaningful way to assess our programs. This is something that statistics can capture. It's the comfort of a senior citizen from Greenville who's walking to the corner store for the first time in years without fear, or it's the optimism of the Journal Square resident who can walk home from the path late at night without hesitation or a feeling of danger. A change in perception can't be measured, it can't be quantified, but I assure you it exists. While we're far from perfect, we are continuing to make progress. Make no mistake, despite occasional challenges, we are winning the fight on crime here in Jersey City.
tonight, we are renewing our commitment publicly to this fight and assure you that we will never lose focus on protecting each and every resident in this city. The, the root causes of criminal behavior are often complicated. I'm sure you all agree. Solutions are not always easy, and sometimes progress comes slower than expected. But we are making progress with strategies on several fronts that I want to share that are tangible. First, an increased open dialogue, and we believe this is crucial. This means better communication between the city and the public, and it's our first critical step in our approach to public safety. In the fall of last year, I think you all know we saw an uptick in crime, prompting us to begin engaging in conversation with residents about crime, concerns, and potential solutions. These types of conversations are most productive when everyone has the facts, and we've emphasized the importance of providing open data and complete information throughout this process. The Jersey City Open Data Portal on the city website allows us to proactively provide the public with unfiltered and unbiased information on crime and other police activities throughout the city. We are trying to break down the information barriers between government and residents in order to encourage honest dialogue aimed at increasing public safety. The second area I want to highlight in addition to data is we're focused on structural changes to our personnel. When we took office, we recognize the importance of a strong and dedicated department aimed at building a safer city. One of our first steps towards establishing an effective administration was to hire a dynamic and knowledgeable public safety director in a national search. And that's Jim Shea, and we thank Jim for all of his efforts. Jim, if you want to stand up. We also appointed, we also appointed Chief of Police Phil Zaki, who joined the fire chief, Darren Rivers, in our leadership. And in an effort to eliminate redundant costs and increase efficiency, we merged the police and fire departments to create the Department of Public Safety. As we took office, we were determined to streamline our efforts to reduce costs and make our approach to public safety as powerful as possible. Furthermore, on the personnel front, we started a ceasefire unit to investigate and give priority to non-fatal shootings. The non-fatal shootings was an area of policing where we thought we could make more progress. So the strong investigative work by our ceasefire detectives is helping to close cases quickly and most importantly to prevent additional shootings before they happen. Since its creation, the ceasefire unit has made arrests at a significantly higher rate than the state or any city in the state of New Jersey's average. And while the ceasefire unit has been successful, we also knew we had to increase manpower on the ground. When we took office, our police force was near historic lows. Since then, we have hired more than 150 police officers to help close that gap. A total of 55 new officers joined last year, and 110 are currently in training in the police academy. Some of them are here tonight. I don't know where you are, if you could stand up, actually. We'll give them a round of applause. You guys can sit down. <laughs> By the end of my first term, it is our goal of the city to have 900 police officers in Jersey City, which would be near a historic high. <laughs> Yet, simply hiring more officers, I know, is not enough. We have made it a priority for our police officers to reflect the, pity, the city that they serve. At the time, that we took office, the police department only had one African-American officer above the entry-level rank of patrolman. I think you agree this racial exclusivity ran counter to the mission of our administration, and we have proved our determination to change this. As Jersey City's America's golden door, we have always had a history of welcoming people from all backgrounds and all walks of life. Jersey City's diversity and history is something we are proud of, and we wanted to reflect that in our police officers on who we hire and who we promote. We have started to actively recruit officers from a variety of backgrounds, and we're continuing to use that Marine Corps model of recruiting to ensure that our police department reflects the true diversity of Jersey City. Jersey City is now considered a national model of police diversity, and as a result, I am proud to report that nearly 70% of the new officers hired and promoted since 2013 have been minorities.
The third significant change to our policing strategy, in addition to the first two I mentioned of transparency of data and personnel changes, the third area of change is our investment in public safety facilities and infrastructure, more than has ever been done before. Jersey City was proud to open this year the new West District Police Precinct named in honor of fallen police detective Melvin Santiago. This facility represents the city's first new police station since 1954. The precinct will serve as a memorial to Detective Santiago, the namesake, and of course the 37 other Jersey City police officers who have lost their lives in service since 1880. On the infrastructure front, we're also building a new police headquarters, which will be the first in the country located within federal public housing. We're excited about this facility for our police leadership, as well as the opportunity to provide a 24-hour police presence in this community, creating a model for other cities as well. This is a historic and unprecedented move that will benefit Jersey City for decades to come. Finally, on the infrastructure front, I want to give credit to Ward C. Councilman Rich Bogiano for championing the reopening of the Jersey City Police Academy, which we intend to make a reality this year. Previous administration closed the academy, and unfortunately, it has led to a shortage of opportunities for new training of officers. We are committed to reversing this mistake. So whether it's more officers, more transparency, or better facilities, public safety will continue to be our main focus in 2016. We'll add more walking posts throughout the city, we'll continue to hire more officers, and we will build community relationships based on trust. This year, that trust will be strengthened in a couple key ways, starting with our great relationship with the new Hudson County prosecutor, Esther Suarez. We have a great dialogue with her office, and together we are working to stiffen penalties for the most violent offenders and ensure that they're prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law so they don't return to the streets and commit repeat offenses. When the community understands that their partnership will result in the most violent criminals being removed from our neighborhoods, we know community members will be more willing to share sensitive information moving forward. We're also building trust in other ways, though. We're building it through technology. We are moving forward to equip our men and women in uniform with body cameras. <laughs> Last week, we started the deployment of body cameras to be worn by our on-duty officers throughout Jersey City. These cameras will provide video and audio recordings of interactions between police and civilians, enhancing transparency, accountability, and professionalism. More importantly, they will help us build trust. See, for us at City Hall, we know it is more than just statistics that make us the safest city in the region. Rather, it is every single action taken on this front that is making Jersey City into the safest large city in New Jersey. Thinking of ways to make Jersey City safer is the single issue we are most passionate about. However, it's important to note that our approach to creating a safer city has been a holistic one. It's no coincidence that we also have the lowest unemployment rate of any large city in the state and the region. According to the most recent figures, which I touched on earlier, Jersey City's unemployment rate was 4.1%, repre representing stronger job growth than anywhere in the region, period. In the time since we took office, we have added over 6,000 new jobs in both small and large businesses in a variety of sectors. See, we see the link between increased economic opportunities and decreases in crime every single day. And we've taken steps to bring these solutions to the neighborhoods that need them most. The newly formed Office of Innovation, it's focused on revitalizing neighborhood business districts outside of downtown, specifically targeting Martin Luther King Drive, Ocean Avenue, Monticello Avenue, Westside Avenue, and Central Avenue. Our aim is to bring businesses and jobs back to these once booming commercial hubs. And by creating vibrant main streets that welcome visitors, we know it will also help deter crime. We've incentivized businesses to invest in neighborhoods by providing financing for small businesses, including the touted $10 million Jersey City Fund program, which offers entrepreneurs even more access to capital. We're also going to continue to expand the resources necessary to help small businesses that already exist so that they can thrive as well. 
including this year professional development classes and a new small business portal we are launching later this year. Earlier this year, the City Council passed an ordinance creating the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. In order to encourage minority and women-owned businesses as partners in city contracts, the office will provide training, seminars, and workshops aimed at giving these business owners the tools needed to become city vendors and service providers. It's our hope that this initiative will encourage the growth of our minority and women-owned businesses while also working to foster inclusive neighborhoods and increase the diversity of cities' small businesses. Having safer neighborhoods has led to the emergence of new businesses throughout our city, from the Heights, to Bergen Lafayette, to Greenville, to Westside. But there's still much more work to be done, and our progress will depend on all of us working together as one. As important as it is to ensure that business owners and job seekers have the resources they need to succeed, we've also continued to stress the importance of providing valuable and positive opportunities to our city's youth. Throughout the last two years, we've implemented programs that engage children and teenagers throughout the city in recreation, in arts, in mentoring, and professional development. Providing opportunities for city's youth to learn a new skill or gain practical work experience can be transformative, not only for the student, but for the community as well. Community engagement is key, whether it takes shape through supporting new small businesses on MLK Drive or involving thousands of teenagers in the Jersey City Summer Works Program. I am incredibly proud of the sense of commitment and community I see in Jersey City every single day, and it's something we will continue to encourage. As we, all, we have all come to learn, public safety is a group effort, and we can't do this alone. We must all be vigilant and proactive in addressing the causes of criminal activity, and we must unify our efforts as one community, as one city. If we work together, crime will not stand a chance. We're very optimistic about our future. Whether it's the 100 residents who volunteer to shovel snow for their senior neighbors as part of JC Shovels, or it's the 1,000 residents who will come volunteer emergency responders through United Rescue. The people of Jersey City inspire us every single day. Since day one of our administration, we have been focused on building a safer, more welcoming city. Public safety is the foundation upon which any success must rest. Without it, we wouldn't be seeing the scale of investment we have seen over the last year, and without a strong vision for public safety, we wouldn't be on track to become the largest city in New Jersey in the next few years. Sorry, Russ. <laughs> I'm committed, I am committed to making this city even safer and in ways that go well beyond statistics. I'm committed to building that sentiment of safety for all of our residents in all of our neighborhoods that no statistic can capture. That's why we've started building a diverse police force to walk neighborhoods and build relationships with the community. And that's why we plan to move our police headquarters to federal public housing. That's why we've started to utilize crime data to more effectively deploy our officers at the time and location that they're needed most. That's why we've merged the police and fire into one new department of public safety. That's why we've engaged in transparent and productive community meetings in each ward on an ongoing basis. But the work is not done, and I know we will continue to improve. It's hard work, I'm sure you know, but we will come together as one great, safe, and united community. We'll come together as one Jersey City, and together we will ensure that bright, bright days lie ahead. Thank you, and God bless Jersey City.